Welcome to the MATLAB and Simulating Robotics Arena. Today we have Shubham here with us. Hey Shubham, how are you? I'm good, Jose. How are you doing? Great, thank you. Uh, Shubham is going to teach us and show us a demonstration about how to create uh, custom SLAM algorithms and how to deploy them using, using ROS nodes. Um, so please take it over, Shubham. So in this session, we'll take a look at uh, some basic terminologies of SLAM. What are different types of SLAM algorithms? Uh, then we'll take a look at how we can use a LiDAR SLAM in ROS. We'll take a look at software demonstration and some key takeaways. Perfect. So why do we need SLAM? We need SLAM uh, for navigation in unknown environments where we, need, where we need to estimate position of robots in the landmark. Another reason is no sensors are perfect. And for motion sensors, the errors grow with time. Another reason is non-availability of GPS and it causes your system to drift over time. Uh, let's take a quick look at the components of SLAM. SLAM stands for Simultaneous Localization Mapping. The first part is your localization where uh, you are given the map of the environment and you use onboard sensor data to estimate your pose of the robot. Uh, similarly in mapping, you are, given the, uh, you are given the trajectory of the robot and you use onboard sensor data to build a map. And in SLAM, simultaneous localization mapping, uh, you perform both the operations, localization and mapping, but you alternate between them so that you map and localize your vehicle at the same time. Let's take a look at some different types of SLAM algorithm. First one is your online SLAM. So here, uh, what we do is like, we, we uh, make our robot run into an environment, we collect the sensor data, and then we, t we take that data and build a map offline okay then in online slam we are interested in determining the current pose of the of the robot and the environment of the latest collected data this type of uh, slam is mostly suited for real-time application so when you're navigating in unknown spaces you you need to like uh, get your position and landmarks at that time instant okay Shubham, so it sounds like um the main difference is if you have access to whatever environment you're going to be navigating in you might consider an offline SLAM. And what if you are not gonna have access and you're gonna need to recognize that environment without any previous um, sort of travel of the robot, then you would go for online SLAM, right? Yes, you're right. Sounds good. Let's take a look at uh, how SLAM algorithm is implemented. So first we have a motion model of the robot, uh, which, is, which are basically kinematics. Then we have measurement model, which is a sensor model. In this case, is a LiDAR model. Then you have the control inputs. Uh, based on using this, you have to find the robot's pose and the feature location. There's a front-end part which handles sensor data for motion estimation and obstacle esti estimation. And similarly, there is back-end part which registers your poses and performs the optimization, and it gives you a pose and map. In order to make this uh, algorithm usable in MATLAB, MATLAB is a system object uh, for implementing SLAM. So what it does is like it handles both of your front end and the back end part uh, with using some parameters like map resolution, LiDAR range, and maximum number of scans. Uh, Shubham, it sounds like uh, you will, this object will both receive the inputs and a couple of parameters, and then it will live in the MATLAB uh, workspace as a SLAM object, right? That's the type that you're going to be seeing in MATLAB, right? Yes. Okay. Shubham, and uh, for the purpose of today's demo, uh, we're going to be running a full simulation using Simulink, right? So why don't you tell us a little bit about the benefits of running something like this? Yeah, so you can test and prototype your algorithm in uh, MATLAB and Simulink. It's, uh, it basically makes it easier to simulate your algorithm and then test it in real life. You can uh, simulate it for real-time systems. Okay. And finally, uh, it will generate a uh, code for you that can be deployed to your ROS, ha ROS hardware. Sure, sounds good. Now let's take a quick look at software demonstration. Okay, here is the simulating model which shows implementation of LADAR SLAM, which interfaces with your gazebo simulator. Uh, so basically, uh, in this simulink model, uh, you're going to see a modeling environment where you have different blocks that represent part of the algorithm. And this one in particular is interacting with a 
simulated robot that's running ROS. So you can directly uh, interact via ROS uh, commands, such as subscribing to topics and publishing topics. And I think that's what we have over here. So Shubham, why don't you tell us a little bit about um, how we're interacting with this ROS robot with this model? In order to configure your Simulink model uh, for your ROS uh, enable system, you go to ROS network, you specify the uh, IP address of your ROS master or your ROS machine, the IP address of your MATLAB PC. Okay, you can find this using IP config in your command command prompt. So here we have implementation of our lidar slam model. On the left hand side, we have user controls. Uh, which commands your control of total button forward, reverse, reverse, and left and right direction. Uh, on the right hand side, you have uh, the implementation of a LiDAR slam where you subscribe your data from a scan topic, okay, and this subscriber block passes this data to your algorithm block here. It processes the LiDAR, LiDAR data and outputs the status and the pose. So we use publisher blocks. Uh, to publish the status of our slam algorithm and the post so here the topics are slam status and post topic great and one thing to note is that uh, we've done this development in simulink but if you're interested in just doing it with only code you can also just uh, write it all in matlab as well okay. let's take a look at how we have implemented our lidar slam so uh, on the left hand side side we have our data coming from our subscriber we have this function here called extract range data which takes in your laser scans and calculates range and angle this is fed to your lidar slam system object okay it takes in both the values and outputs your slam status pose and map data so if i run it see here that it's generating a map and if you click on the arrows, okay, then it will display the values. Now let's control our turtle bot. Click forward. It will send a forward motion command and similarly the map will update accordingly. Shubham, so uh, according to the types that we covered earlier, this would be the equivalent of online slime, right? Yes, this has been executed in real time and yeah. Now let's take a look at how we have implemented our LiDAR slime object. We'll go into our subsystem, uh, double click the LiDAR slime system object. Click the source code over here, and here you can see we have implemented a system object. In, in this part, we specify our parameters like map resolution, lidar range, low closure parameters, and maximum number of scans. Here's where we create our lidar slam object, okay, and we pass in our parameters that we specified earlier. Here's when you get your uh, range and uh, angle data, so we update our algorithm. With the latest available range and angle data, and it outputs us your slam status, pose, and your map data. Um, and one thing to keep in mind is if you're interested in exploring more about these parameters and how to implement this, uh, you can check out the documentation for this system object, the LiDAR slam system object, and you can see all the details of the different parameters. Also, the code for this demonstration is available uh, in the link below. Let's go back again to our simulink model. So once we have tested our slime algorithm, uh, the next step is to move to code generation. So where we'll uh, deploy our ROS node into our uh, Catkin workspace. So here I have the code uh, from the previous simulation and I have modified it a little bit. So we have removed the buttons over here, the left, right, left, up, up and down button. Apart from that, I have removed all the visualization function in the system objects, uh, which are not supported by code generation. And 
the rest of the structure is pretty same. We have a subscriber node, we have our uh, algorithm subsystem, okay? we have our publishers. That's it. Shibaman, uh, quick question. How do you get this model set up uh, to be smart enough to generate the code in your Catkin workspace directories? Yeah. So for that, we go to our ROS tab. Okay. Then we click on hardware settings. Once we have our hardware setting options, we go to hardware implementation. Uh, we select our hardware board as ROS, and in target hardware libraries, we select build options and specify our ROS folder on Catkin workspace. To specify that, we click edit. Okay, we specify the device address, a device username and device password, then ROS folder, and then we put in our Catkin workspace, the workspace you want, which you want to deploy your ROS node. We click test. And then OK. Yeah. So we can see here it's showing done with the connection test. That means it has connected with the your specified caching workspace. Okay. Now to build code, we go to this uh, option. We select the, in the drop down menu, we have three options build model, build and load, and build and run. Build model, this builds a ROS node, build and load. Builds our ROS node and deploys it to our Catkin workspace. Build and run, it builds your ROS node, deploys it to your workspace, and runs it. Let's select build and run. So here you can see it's uh, generating your ROS node. And if you're not familiar with this view, that is the simulink diagnostic viewer that pops up whenever you're generating code or when you have an error or warning message. When turning in ROS, you can echo the topic to make sure the post has been published. Note that if I move the robot, the post adjusts accordingly. And if you are interested in debugging your model directly from Simulink, you can use the monitor and tune functionality instead. Okay, thanks Yvonne. That was a great software demo. We'll move over to our key takeaways. So as a summary, what we covered today, Shubham gave us a great introduction about uh, SLAM and why it's used and what the different types of SLAM are. We looked at how you can use a library like the LiDAR SLAM of MATLAB object in order to create your own SLAM algorithms and how you can use Simulink or MATLAB to generate the code and deploy a ROS node uh, into your ROS environment. Thanks for watching this video. As we mentioned before, the files for the demonstration we used in the video are, are available in the comment section below. And if you have any questions, feel free to get in touch with us at uh, roboticsarena at mathworks.com or through our Facebook group. Uh, if you're participating in a student competition, you can take advantage of our software offer and you can check out more robotics content at our student launch. Thank you.